I believe there's just no better model in commercial real estate at this point. Extremely excited to get this out there. And already the feedback is tremendous. What's what's been the maybe the biggest objection that uh, that you're receiving though when it comes to um, commercial agents, right? Aren't they saying, "Well, Jim, this is this is a residential firm," or or uh, how, how do I know this thing's going to work? Or can't can't you know Marcus Amilla Chap or CB Richard Ellis or Spurry Van Ness can't they just you know create their own verbella or create you know and just do everything online too and get rid of the brick and mortar? Walk through just how how the history of EXP and what gives you the confidence that. It's going to be very difficult to, to catch up. Yeah. So right now we're building on, like I said, success. It did take from, you know, back in the early 2000s uh, that, uh, that Glenn set this up. And then obviously it took years and years before it got adopted. I would say during the last two or three years, EXP has gone into some hyper growth getting noticed. And during the time of COVID, it, it has accelerated remote working and working in this manner. Commercial agents, I would just say, are a little more old school and they want to have a brick and mortar, but they don't understand the cost, right? The cost of the brick and mortar and everything is what makes the commission so high that they have to be 50, 50 or 60, 40, right? That makes it very difficult when there's already commission compression. So those that are open-minded to adopt, and, and you've tried it, many other successful commercial agents and teams have already been using the ESP kind of model. They've been doing very well under this, but it takes time for people to adapt, to get comfortable. But once it does, and I think the success is going to be faster than the residential because of already the success. We do know how to set this up by having commercial broker of records, a commercial leadership team run the company. That differentiates it from the resi commercial or the adding just the commercial part of residential. We have a good control. We know how to set this up. We've done it before. And then with the competitive splits allows agents to collaborate and cooperate with all the tools that they need, with all the education that we have. This is what's going to make us uh, very successful and very different from everyone else. And the other firms cannot copy us because that destroys their model. Let's say they bring technology into their system. Are they going to reduce the fees to EXP's competitive fees? They cannot. That will collapse their whole system. Even if they adapt the technology, which they, they probably will, they cannot adjust their splits because their splits are already ingrained. The minute they adjust their splits, their profit margins drop. So they cannot do that. It would be a total disruption. And this is what I said about, like you said, when you're saying Blockbuster, or like say Kodak, let's say a lot of the brick and mortars retails, they already had the opportunity to use digital, like for Kodak. Amazon uh, went to Barnes and Noble and everyone else, right? As they started as a bookstore. Blockbuster had the chance to do Netflix. They didn't because what they said was it impacts our direct business. We can't do it. We're competing against ourselves. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. But you're hedging against the changes in the market. And now because they didn't do it at all or partner with a company like us and maybe some other technology companies, what happened to those companies? They're gone. There are no longer the companies that they used to be because they couldn't change. And that's the problem. Their model was so stuck, it would disrupt their company so bad. So I think a lot of them just wrote it out. And maybe this is what's happening with the large commercial companies. They know that they can't change. That would disrupt their entire financial model. They have to just go with it to see how long they could adjust, maybe in the next 10 to 20 years. So that's what I see what's going on. But those that are willing and able to make this adjustment or find new dance partners to partner with to add long uh, add a little longevity to your life and your business while you're trying to adapt is what I think many needs to do during this time. Absolutely. So well said. And the collaboration and then the 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 culture and the leadership what I found EXP has been so refreshing is it's it's actually like oh my gosh, I want to share all my secrets and all, all of my skill sets. And I want to do collaboration and training and it's, it's national too, right? So somebody in a different state who might have, have done a deal, let's say in New York, but then deal in California and they've already been collaborating and working together. Now they can join EXP. And when they do that, their team grows. And now it's almost like creating 
um, national franchises of your brokerage business versus just being in your foxhole over here and maybe just getting one referral fee and actually creates an opportunity you want to give, you want to make them succeed as much as possible. So they can, they can coach more people and train more people, which then creates more opportunity for more people to get what's called revenue sharing. So mm -hmm. it's a, it, why? Because of the profits, um, they're able to share that because it's cloud-based, right? All of the savings, kind of like a, an Uber, right? Uber didn't go out and buy taxis. They said, look, there's already taxis out there. You know, um, uh, in a sense, we have Verbella, we have the internet. We already have the internet out there. We have Verbella. Uber created an app, right? Which used the existing, you know, inventory of not even taxis, but they actually did people's cars. They're already using these cars, right? And it flipped everything upside down. And I think the, the stock market, which is really interesting, and I think it's really uh, powerful too. I think it was $10 a year ago or $8, like two years ago. And now it's up to, I think it went as high as 61. Now I think it's dropped back down to about 44. It's yep. kind of that range. But you're seeing rapid adoption, a rapid excitement um, um, in the in the uh, you know Nasdaq and in the stock market, and you're seeing that that rapid growth as well, which is cool too because you have what's called uh, you know uh, stock sharing or stock yeah. options. You can purchase at a discount as well as when you close deals, they you can get you also get stock. So and essentially you're building your dream, right? Your family's dream and your team's dream versus just building the dream for, for, for somebody else, right? Is, is that a fair summary, Jim, or anything to add to that? No, that, that is perfect. And, and, and the great thing that you said with their leadership, the leadership from my experience are so open-minded, so creative, so collaborative at the top. They're not in a silo. They're not sitting on laurels. They, are, they want to innovate. They want to make changes. They want to disrupt, which I found very refreshing at the leadership. They're just saying, Jim, we're open, share. What do you think you got? What do you think we can do? And we're all talking about how do we make this company better? I found that very refreshing because when we do this and we're stayed open-minded and nimble, we make these drastic and dramatic changes in the industry to keep on evolving. And like you said, we all own this company now, which is refreshing because a lot of times you work so hard for other companies and you have nothing to show for it, except you're just running on that hamster wheel, trying to make that, uh, make that rent payment, make that car payment, just you know, paying bills rather than building equity, building wealth for yourself. And I said, if you just do your job, don't worry so much about the stock, it's gonna come by just doing well. You're gonna be retired. You're gonna be successful by just doing the job you're supposed to do. This is so much of a, a benefit, you know, in addition to collaborating with the residential, getting a ton of referrals as we uh, pass deals back and forth to each other. I believe there's just no better model in commercial real estate at this point and very exciting to share for 2020. Extremely excited to get this out there. And already the feedback is tremendous of how many people would like to join this platform and grow with us. Yes, very well said. I can't think of, I think of the analogy, Robert Kiyosaki, Robert Kiyosaki spoke, rich dad, poor dad. And I'm thinking like, we, uh, Jim, we, uh, we should write a book called Rich Broker, Poor Broker, right? <laughs> where, where you can do, you could do, you know, you have two, you could have two things. You could sell another hundred deals in the next, you know, next five years and, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in brokerage. And you can build a team on one side versus another side and see what those look like.